Greetings, friends, and welcome to another prop build with my best friend here, the Utah Raptor. Uh, when I was working on a different prop, I mentioned that I would like to do it. Actually, I did a Utah Raptor claw back on one of my other videos, and this is the big boy that appears to be the proper size of a Utah Raptor, which is five feet tall by 15 feet long. What was I thinking when I said I'm going to build this thing whole full size? <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't, because right in front of you is a full size skull, so that tells you a lot. Regardless, right away, down below, template. For the skull. Uh, the, the whole template might be there for the whole body if I get around to it, but for this video we're just going to build the skull because yeah, this turned out to be a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. So regardless, the template will be all set up so you can take it, cut it out, and stick it together and you get a nice big skull. Now the next step is you're going to need some one inch styrofoam and you're going to cut the whole thing out. So you see here how the teeth I've left just a little bit above. That's so you're not fighting the teeth when you're going to cut out. We're just going to actually just slot those later because technically the teeth should be in the skull. It's a, it's a gray area. We can take advantage of it. And I'm just going to reach over and grab my second one. And then you'll see the second piece here is for the lower jaw. Now, these marks here are going to be when we go and texture it. These are going to be cut out. These are going to be hard for me to cut out because my wire cutter doesn't go all the way in, so I might have to use a jigsaw in there and then clean it up after. So the first step we're going to be doing is we need to get this cut out of this one inch styrofoam. So I'm going to go do that. I will actually have you along for the ride and I'll talk to you after I finish, uh, you know, cutting out this huge skull, which was a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be if I didn't mention that before. Once you have your main skeleton all cut out, now this part here is pretty straightforward in terms of how involved or how least involved you want to be on it. I have to go cut this out with a jigsaw because I can't get to it with my saw, with my hot knife, which by the way, you see how it's all bent like this? This is because when I was working, I broke my uh, line and I couldn't find my replacement. So now I had to bend it down about, oh, about an inch and a half to get it to work. You see, sometimes... You just make things work. Anyway, so what you're going to do now is you're going to go through and using initially a knife, you're going to go through and you're going to texture your teeth here. I wanted to have a more jagged looking teeth. I didn't want them all smooth because I like the way they look when they look like this. They look more menacing, I guess you could say. You can make them as realistic or as least realistic as you want, but the main goal is to get it so it comes down a bit. Now, you see here, if you look on the profile here, that there's a bit of a dip there on the teeth. That's because I wanted to keep the teeth as thick as possible without taking away too much material. In a perfect world, you take a knife and you'd half the size of these teeth and then they would end up being inside of the bone of the jaw, but you lose a lot of thickness, so you lose a lot of strength. Then, using the same knife here, you go through and you cut out all of the edges. You chamfer them a little bit and you get them close to where you want it because after that you'll be taking a, uh, either a sanding block or a palm sander with a 360 grit sandpaper and go to town on this thing. You can then go through, you can force all of the pieces out, like all of the uh, styrofoam out that you want. 
like here you can see on just how much using the palm sander that I took out of there. Now, if you want to be accurate, go look exactly on how these bones are actually like shaped. If you look uh, down below, I put a link to a 3D file on another website that is a rendering that you can swing around and look exactly how it is. But let's be honest, most likely you can just have some fun, make it look cool. And 99.9% .9 of people will not notice it. And then that one pa the one paleontologist that you run into who says, uh, that is wrong, you'll just say, thank you, I wanted to find a paleontologist. So, <laughs> And all the paleontologists who watch my videos are like, you just triggered me, man, you just triggered me. Anyways, I'm going to get this all finished, cut out, going to get some chamfering done, and then get it all sealed. I might record it, I might not, depending on how things work out in my day here. Anyways, uh, the only other step that I do at the end is once this is close, I use a heat gun to hit this surface and really make this surface go hard. So it gets a really nice finish on it and it's really resilient to being damaged. So there you go. See, there's the, there's the jaw. And you can see how the heat gun smooths out all of the surface there. It makes it look really good. Anyways, I'm going to go get this part done and I will see you potentially with me recording doing it. Or if all things go wrong, you'll just see it done. See you in a few. Now you see where we've got up to at this point. And all I pretty much did was sand it down like I'd mentioned. And then I used the heat gun. Now one of the tricks you can do with the heat gun is right here. You can see how it's darker. And up here it's darker. Because what I did is I focused the heat gun for longer on those places and what it does is it causes the the material to melt further and go in there's always a fine balance because at some point it starts to stretch and wreck and then after that i just used a wood burning iron to make the cracks into the actual uh fossil now you don't have to do this part with the cracks you can leave it full but i always like the way that it looked like you might remember this video from a while ago this was the um used uh, air dry clay to do this one you can see that the cracks really look good in it and it gives it an authenticity because like this is what you're basing it off of like this is an actual real fossil of i believe this is like a, a sea like a sea creature anyways but you can see the texture on the actual fossil itself where it's got a I, it's that brown replacement i think it's an agate replacement but anyways you can see here all the cracks that appear in the actual fossil itself, and that's how it looks. So when you compare the two to each other, as an example, they're not too, too far off of each other, and that's what you're aiming for more than anything. So how much you do on your big fossils up to you, once you've got it all you know, heat gunned and you've got it down to the where you want, you put the cracks in, you can now use a piece of, I call, this is my favorite piece of concrete, uh, just left over from my chicken coop, oddly enough. And I like it because it's so random, so when I start using it to texture the foam, it really, I can roll it in different directions to get a really nice texture on it. And we're just going to move that out of the way. We're going to move this to here. Got to move that out of the way before I sit on it. But you can see how you go from the nice clear and then, you don't want to be consistent. You want to be random about the, the weight that you put onto it, the strength that you put on, and then you'll end up with a texture that is random and, you know, it, it's not perfect. And that you don't want perfect. It's the one thing you really want to avoid. Don't go too hard because you can punch through the styrofoam and then you end up with a whole extra set of trouble. Now, our next set of finish is... If you want a really, really smooth fossil like this one, what you'll want to do is taking a mixture of acrylic uh, latex caulk, dilute it with water by about 50%, so it almost looks like a white glue. And then what you're going to do is you're going to paint it over your whole piece. And what it does is when you do that, it ends up with a really polished look onto it. So it looks smooth as if it's if it is like an agate replacement where the surface has been fossilized perfectly. Now, this surface here is brilliant as well. The the post uh, error the heat, post heat gun surface, and if you like that, move on to the next step, which is the uh, doing the uh, painting, but which is just your base coat painting. 
but it's up to you on what finish you would want more. Just remember that if you don't put the acrylic caulk on this before you paint it, the, the texture of the foam will come through more. The acrylic caulk just kind of also smooths it out. Like it'll look more like this when you're done, more than looking something like that concrete there. But anyways, I am going to be using one of my uh, favorite paints. And as you can see, I'm Captain Mist Tint. This is Rum Raisin. This has been one of my favorite. I could not have actually gone and found a better fossil color for paints because this base is just amazing. It's the same base that I used on the Utah Raptor Claw when I did it a while ago. I love this color and it works so well. So I'm going to go get those all base coated up and then I'll come back and we'll talk about the finishing and dry brushing of it and take it from there. All right, my dinosaur is all finished. Well, the skull is. Anyways, all I did on this is after the rum raisin dried, I went through and did a dry brush of black and a dry brush of burnt sienna. And what this does is it allows me to pretty much emphasize shadow areas and then emphasize highlight areas. And all you want to do is pretty much just run the surfaces you want to be like as if they're they're higher you want to do burnt sienna and everything darker and then it should be further back you want to go black and you can see up here how I played that where the black in this indent here really shows up and then I went through and it just hit black in certain areas to make it look nice and then the burnt sienna to add a bit more character to the overall color you just keep on going until you're happy with where you end up as a destination in terms of how the paint looks. But you can see here, it's pretty much straightforward. If you're not familiar with how to do a bunch of dry brushing, there's a video up here I did a while ago that will help you kind of figure it all out. And then once you've got it all finished here, you wanna go get um, this, I've got the Varathane Satin. This actually probably would look better with a gloss, but I didn't have any on hand at the time. So I went with a satin and you know, you can see that the finish that it ends up with is really nice and reflective. It also protects it, you know, overall, once the styrofoam gets to this point, it is a pretty resilient prop that you can use for all sorts of things, for decoration, all that. And you can use this for doing more than just dinosaurs, but I did a dinosaur because I think it's cool. Anyways, I'm going to be putting up the template, as I said, down below. So if you wanna have access to it, you can. Let me know in the comments if you think I should go through and finish this whole dinosaur because it's a lot of work and if there's interest, I will build the whole dinosaur because it's 15 feet long and I think that the final thing would look fantastic, but I also don't want to chase a rabbit where if nobody's interested in this type of stuff, I will move on to something else, so one of my many projects. But thank you so much for hanging out. Um, please, if you like the video, like, subscribe all that, and a big thank you to my patrons who keep on sending me a little bit each month to help me pay for the styrofoam, the, the paints. Good gosh, there's a lot of that goes into this. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you could hang out and have some fun with me building this very cool dinosaur skeleton. And you can see just what a, what a wall piece just to have as is. You also have the option of mounting this onto a second piece of styrofoam and then doing what I did with the trilobite and then putting the background on it with the with the stone texture. The trilobite video I'll also link up here because if you want to go and mount your fossil onto that, you can. But anyways, thank you for hanging out and have a good one all. See you on the next one.